Come and stand on it. Or you come and stand beside me as we open up in our hymn book, number 815, and it's called a doxology. And if you would, let's stand together.
let's turn back. Let's see, what is the next song? 461. This is, I, I thought about this last week when we were doing communion, and it's just a, a beautiful song in remembrance. And this morning we're going to sing both verses. Jesus who died and is now gone above. But the fourth verse says, Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above. And when I heard that, I read that, and uh, I just thought, you know, when we leave this place today, we don't want to just leave everything we learned here. We want to take it with us and share that fire. Man, sorry. It's like a hunk, hunk of yeah, right. <coughs> Let's sing a song. Revive us again. Here we go, John. <laughs>
and thank you for being here. And before we have communion this morning, I would like to read from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 47 through 51. And these are the words of Jesus. John chapter 6, verses 47 through 51. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. This juice represents the precious blood of Jesus that he shed for the sins of the world. Remember him as we drink together. Before we take up our offering, I'd like to read from the book of Matthew. From Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 and 25. These words that all of you know so very well. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Amen.
If we don't have any other prayer requests this morning, I'm going to turn to the book of Romans. From Romans chapter 5, reading verses 1 through 5. If you'd like to sit and listen to these words from the book of Romans. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Amen. 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 It's pretty clear right there, isn't it? Hope does not disappoint us. Hope being a confident expectation. That's what this kind of hope means. Confidence <coughs> in the Lord. Well, what a beautiful day to be here. I think we have a little bit more sun than the forecasters thought we might have, so I hope this continues today. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful backdrop, of course, to uh, coming and worshiping here. And if nothing else today, you can sit, and maybe it's just a day you need to sit and meditate on something. Maybe there's just you're not really uh, paying too much attention to uh, the message or... Uh, the music or whatever's going on, but something you need to meditate on today in this place of peace. Because once we leave here, it's back into the chaos, isn't it? Uh, so today, in the stillness, we can quiet ourselves and be still and listen for God. Now you probably noticed that there's no joke of the day uh, in your bulletin. However... <laughs> However, I do have one. What is green, tall, rides on a horse, and is riding off into the sunset? Hi ho, the lone pickle. I'm Pickle Rick! <coughs> 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 I didn't tell it exactly the way I wanted to, but it's close enough. Tyler, just edit that completely out of the, uh, the service today. But you know, bad jokes are meant to be repeated. That Mountain Dew smells good. There's, there's no doubt about that. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ah, there was one part of that joke that I did forget. Tall, green, this probably would have clued you in. Wears a mask. <laughs> And rides his horse off into the sunset. That would have done it. That would have told you it is the lone pickle. Well, maybe you'll want to remember this more than you will that joke. But uh, last week uh, we talked about Thomas and how uh, Thomas was labeled what? Doubting Thomas for that week long period where all he wanted was proof that. Jesus was alive. So today, we're going to look at the doubt of someone else. Or the doubt by someone else. And how it turned out for this person. So if you would, get your Bible or the Pew Bible and turn to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, I'll give you a moment if you want to turn there. Or you can just sit back and listen. John chapter 18, and I'm going to read verses 12 through 27. John chapter 18, verses 12 through 27. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. 
Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoke openly to the world, Jesus replied. I was taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Ah, Simon. Simon Peter, his old name was Simon, son of John. <clears throat> that was a name that his parents gave him. And he had gone by that name right up until Jesus had changed his name to Peter, the rock. He was the rock. But it appears here that Peter hadn't lived up to that new name. He let Jesus down. That night, he had given up the right to be called the rock. Now Jesus, as we know, had predicted that he would be arrested. He had predicted that he would be executed. And he had predicted that all of his disciples and all of his close friends would desert him. But the rock, Peter, uh, he, he didn't think so, if you remember. He couldn't believe that. And Peter said to Jesus in his usual bold manner that even if the other disciples took off and left Jesus, he'd never do that. Because he loved Jesus more than the others did. But then Jesus was arrested. Jesus was put on trial. Now at first, it did appear that Peter was braver than most of the other disciples. As we read, he had defended Jesus with his sword in the Garden of Gethsemane when they came to arrest him. And so here he is. He goes into the courtyard of the high priest's house because he was determined to stay with Jesus. But then he was recognized. And as some of the scripture says, he was recognized by a slave girl. The slave girl was the lowest of the low in that society. And Peter lies to her. He lies to a slave of all people about knowing Jesus. So where was Peter's bravery now? Where was the rock? And Peter, or now, should I say, Simon, continued to deny knowing Jesus. He continued to lie about knowing Jesus. He denied knowing a man and to whom he had pledged his complete loyalty not long before, hadn't he? So Jesus had called him the rock, but that rock had crumbled, hadn't it? That rock had crumbled to dust. 
Now, that would be a terrible ending to Peter's story. But the story didn't end there, did it? We know that it does not end right there. So, you have your Bible handy. Turn over to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 19. John 21, beginning with verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter was now with the risen Jesus, wasn't he? He was with the man for whom he had declared all that love, all that undying love, all that devotion. But he was also talking with the Jesus that he had denied knowing, that he had denied loving. So again, Peter was no longer the rock. He was just Simon. He was plain old Simon, just, just Simon. And Jesus said, Simon, son of John. Now, I would bet you that Simon, at that point, didn't want to hear what he thought Jesus was going to say to him next. What was Jesus going to say to Simon after he had denied knowing him? Was Jesus going to tell Simon that he didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore? Someone who lied about him? It wouldn't be far off base, would it? Just forget it. You denied knowing me. I don't know you. 
that would have been a possibility going through Simon's head. Was Jesus going to tell Simon, you're no longer welcome here. You're no longer a disciple. You denied knowing me. Go on your way. That would have been something far-fetched for Jesus to say. So Simon didn't have to wait long for an answer, though, did he? Jesus asked Simon some questions. Do you love me more than these? Now, again, it wasn't that long ago that the rock had declared his unshakable love. And so here was Jesus asking this question. Why was Jesus asking Simon this question? He must have thought. Did Jesus doubt that he loved him? Surely Jesus knew what was in Simon's heart, didn't he? But Simon answers the question, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And what did Jesus say? Feed my lambs. So Jesus asked Simon the same question again. Simon gives him the same answer. And then Jesus asked that question again for a third time. Now, can you imagine at that point how Simon must have felt being asked the third time, do you love me? That must have been a little bit painful. The third time, three times you're asking me, do, do you love me? But he says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. You know, Jesus said, feed my sheep. And at that point, there were, there were no more questions from Jesus. Simon had denied Jesus three times. And now, Peter, Simon, Peter, declared his love for Jesus three times. So this restoration is now complete. It has come full circle. He has been restored. He is Peter again. But we notice that after Peter answered Jesus each time, Peter was given a task to complete, wasn't he? A task in some way to be a shepherd, to care for the flock. Peter was to care for the mature sheep and to feed the young sheep. Feed the lambs. Take care of the sheep. From young to old, be a shepherd. We know Jesus often referred to his people, to the people who believed in him as being his sheep, didn't he? He called himself what? The good shepherd. The good shepherd who would do something, though. The good shepherd who would lay down his life for the sheep. That's who Jesus was. The people were still his sheep. It was his voice that they were to listen for. But now... Jesus was giving Peter a share of the task at hand. Peter was to show his love for Jesus by caring for and loving the people. That was to be Peter's life from that point on, to be a labor of love. Love for the great shepherd and love for the sheep. It is impossible to love the great shepherd without loving his sheep. It's impossible to love Jesus without loving his people, the church. If we claim to love Jesus, then we must love those who belong to him. If we say that we love Jesus, but then we don't love the church, then what we are saying is false. It is a false claim. If you get a chance in your leisure, read the book of 1 John. It's not very long. And see what the book of 1 John has to say. Just mentally note that. For Peter, this love for Jesus, this love for his people, was to be expressed by taking on a leadership role in the church. He was to be one of the shepherds of the flock. He was going to lead them to spiritual food, spiritual drink, and Peter's service was going to be on the front line. Peter's service was going to be in public. And for some people, it is like Peter's role. It will be on the front line. But for others, and that's most of us, it's going to be a much quieter role. 
that we fill. Most of us here today, our roles are going to be behind the scenes. They're not going to be in the spotlight where everybody knows who we are and what we're doing. We may be doing things that no one ever knows about except for the Lord. That's the role most of us will fill. So on this particular day, the risen Jesus had come upon what you might say was a down in the dumps Simon. <clears throat> I'd say the least. Down in the dumps. The Simon who had denied him three times. And as we said, he was no longer that rock. He was no longer that Peter that Jesus knew. But you know what Jesus did? He took Simon. He asked him those three times about his love. He then tells him what he needs to do if he truly loves him to serve the people. And the same is true for us today. This is not some abstract story that we can't learn anything about. The same is true for us 2,000 years later. It's one thing to say we love Jesus, but then we must express our love through our service to others. And each one of us here today is going to have a different task. And we're not to be jealous of the task of others. Each one of us has a task. Don't compare your task with the task of others. Just love Jesus, love his sheep, and follow him. Peter is that example for all of us. Because you know what? At some time, we're going to fall short in our love. We're going to fall short in our service to Jesus we're going to fall short in our love and our service for the people. And we go from being a rock of service to a Simon that crumbles. But you know what? We are given the opportunity to become a Peter once again. And that's what's on this side of the church sign. Each day is an opportunity. We're given the opportunity. So let us take the opportunity and become a rock. We're going to have an invitation hymn this morning. And maybe at times we do become that Simon and we crumble a little bit. Maybe we crack just a little bit on the outside. But we have the opportunity to become the rock again. Our hymn of invitation this morning is number 423. It's called The Bond of Love. And this morning we're going to sing both verses. If you would, let's all stand together. just thinking about what your blueprint is and that's the Bible if you haven't read it for a while break it open and just open it see what happens there's always something that's going to guide you in the right direction 
In the name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen. Amen.